Okay, so I'm back, and this is going to be really boring. Uh, I'll give you a little bench rest history here. When I got my first bench rest gun back in the 80s, um, the way the game was played, if you were going to win, was that you would uh, you would shoot H 322 powder and 68 grain bullets. You had neck size only because that's where the accuracy lay. There were no fitted dies at this time. At that time, you were stuck with all of the commercial offerings. So what everybody did was something called neck size only. So you made your PPC cases. Most of the time it was done on a mandrel. They were really raggedy and ugly looking, nasty kind of cases. And um, then you would go out and shoot them and hammer them a few times until you could get something useful, get your cases knocked out to something useful. And then you shot them at about 3250. That was the thing. 3250 is right at the point where you could probably get, I mean, you can get a lot of reloads out of the cases. A lot, if you remember, to keep your bolt lugs greased. This is from back in the day when people would gall lugs because they were. They're basically hammering that thing down, what I call um, palming down, or now sometimes when I'm fire forming, I kind of term coin the term thumbing down because it's so hard to close this thing without tripping that little trigger. So you lived with tight brass, you shot around 3250, 68-ish grain bullets, and you used H322. Then the fins came on the scene. And they came out with some high grade powders of around that same burn rate. Now, burn rates are spooky. I got to preach a little bit about burn, rate, burn rates because just because something says on the chart that it's faster or slower, does not, it does not follow that it's just interchangeable. Some powders, when they're fired with their conventional sized bullets, will go right up the chart step by step. But if, for instance, you try to, in this case, I'm going to try to come up with something to shoot 108 grain bullets out of this gun. And it, you can have two powders that have a similar burn rate, and you put a heavy bullet in front of one, and it'll, it'll do something different. Powders don't always react the same under stress, under, under when you start getting weird. And I've been getting weird for a long time. I've been making wildcat cartridges of all sorts, doing things with I've always been intrigued by bending the rules to come up with something different and hopefully better. And uh, so where I'm going with this is H322 was the powder of choice. Then the fins came on the scene and they came out with a powder that very closely approximates H322. They called it Vitevuri N130. And I shot N130 for a while. Uh, unfortunately, when I quit shooting it, I've still got, I don't know, how many, three or four of these anyway, unopened up there that I will never use again in the PPC because things changed, we moved on, and uh, they then came out with something called 133, which is a quite a bit slower burn, and they started ramping things up uh, it evolved. So now I've got probably six jugs of H322, which I can still use. H322 is a wonderfully versatile powder, and I can make it shoot in PPC. I'm sorry, it just, there's days when for me, velocity is not that important because in the real world is not that important. The difference in wind drift, if you can ag or group better at 3250 than you can at 3350 or 3450, the difference in wind drift is not going to hurt you on a given day. The raw difference between the two group centers is only going to be in the tenths of an inch. But if you shoot a group with one and a group with the other, you may find that... And, and faster doesn't buck wind. And that's another of the things that we need to talk about when we talk about ballistics. Everybody just lives with the idea that faster always 
goes through the wind better, shoots flatter, does all this, and it's just simply not true. But that aside, I'm stuck with a whole bunch of H322 and a whole bunch of N130. I'll use the 322. I've got a little, and, and I'm going to start probably playing with this in one of my little 30s, so I may still use this. But it's a good powder to use for what we're doing here. And I managed to find some old 64 grain burgers, some 64 grain 22s. I should be able to almost load up a, a PPC load here to try this fire forming thing. Now I'm not going to I'm not going to share any of the data until I have results. I'm going to be writing things down off camera here as to how much powder I'm putting in, what kind of a load I'm running. I'm, uh, I'm a safety freak, and the last thing I need is for somebody to get the impression that such and such is safe, only for us to find out that it's horribly unsafe. So, there's not going to be any powder data for a while, um, but I'm going to get this thing started. And I have some ideas about how, how much powder needs to be in there to get the results that I want. And when I give powder data, anytime on this channel, it's never going to be in powder measure settings, which are commonly called clicks. See, that was the other thing. Everybody talked clicks back in the day. And clicks are confusing because a culver measure will, you know, yield a certain result. A harrow will yield a certain result. So, 133, and what I've got to consider here, because this case is undersized and small, it's going to create, it's going to excite the charge more, it's going to produce more pressure faster. But because a bunch of that pressure is being used to blow the case out, that's going to eat some of it back up. The fact that the bullet has no resistance in the bore, that it's in fact a 22 caliber bullet rattling down a 6mm bore with gas blowing out all around it, is again going to change the paradigm. So, what I'm going to do here is load up some 220 Russian cases with what I consider to be my best guess, using some 64 grain burgers. I'll probably do five of them because, uh, well, we'll see. Maybe I'll take one out and give it a pop and see what it looks like. If it looks good, then maybe I'll do five. But the point is, I'm getting started on this fire forming with a bullet so that I can then go neck turn on the lathe. I've been threatening you with it for a while, so any of you who are still hanging in there, we're going to move forward with this because it can be useful for somebody someday. I will tell you flat out that if you're thinking about bench rest, I very, very strongly believe that you need to go to a place like Bob White Shooter's Corner, go to the list, find a built, known, established 6 PPC light gun, period, or have built by a bench rest gunsmith a 6 P. I know I had my. I think my third gun was a heavy. I already had two successful light guns, which I've since retired because they had other problems. They were like historic, they were archaic because they didn't cycle. Because as this sport moved forward, fitted dies came in and it became, uh, the only way you could win is to go, I don't know why I said that. A good way to win is to shoot fast. <coughs> to shoot fast, you have to be able to, and again, not have to, People can do all kinds of things. But it offers some advantages, especially shooting fast, to have a gun that doesn't upset your bag setup. So you want cases to fall in and out. When I fire form these cases and I cram them in and I pull the trigger and they pop out, they just fall in and out. Another pop or two to wrinkle, take the creases and wrinkles out of the corners, and uh, then a fitted die, a die that is exactly the match to this particular chamber. And I'm on the road to being able to shoot that case as many times as I want and shoot it exactly the same every time. 
So I'm just saying, if you're watching this and it piques your interest as far as getting set up for seeing real accuracy, first thing, go to a match. Second thing, listen to the people at the match. If somebody's got a gun for sale and you're really in, interested by it, uh, unless, you know, bench rest guys are honest. They're going to tell you that it's broken. There are some guns that don't shoot. Uh, and in that case, you know, they'll say, you take your chances. They'll knock off a couple hundred bucks and say, you know, maybe with another barrel it'll come alive. And trust me, that has happened a lot. Even though there are actions floating around in the world that have a reputation for being dogs that never shot and whatever. Um, I think the timing barrels things adds into that equation. I think all kinds of things. But that aside, if you want to see accuracy, you got to see a setup that has all of these things working. Making the brass is a huge part of it. So, if you're not ready for that, buy a gun and then buy the brass ready made for one of the three or four people out there that make cases. If you're having a gun built, there are three or four gunsmiths out there that offer the entire package. Uh, the gun, however many cases you want, a starting load, just to get you off the ground and running. And you don't have to believe anything that I say, but I would, I would put 500 bucks on the fact that if you do this, and if you buy a PPC, and if you follow the guy's instructions and he's a known shooter, you will take it out to your range under your conditions in the privacy of yourself and you will proceed to shoot groups that you have never even imagined in your life prior. Right off the rack, untuned, core settings, just blow and go. It'll shoot better than the best tactical gun you've ever seen. So, I'm going to go ahead, I just threw a little powder thrower in the, in the vise here and I'm going to weigh and write down and get some things but I will share this with you. I'm trying 64 grain burger 22 bullets which will fit these 22 cases just fine. I'm going to have to cobble together a die too because I don't have a 220 Russian die. There is a great cartridge out there called the 220 Begs. If I had a 220 Begs die, I'd be all over it, but I just don't. So I'm going to have to find something to whack off a 22 250 die or something. I got dies that I don't need. So I will get some of these loaded up. Hopefully, next video, I will have taken them out in the yard, popped a few out, and we'll be able to look at these cases and go, yay or nay. We will see what happens.